the Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey, welcome everyone to the One Touch Ministry broadcast where we believe in touching hearts and changing lives. My name is the pastor, reverend, elder, whatever you want to call me, <laughs> Shannon Young, and this is my lovely, beautiful wife, the prophetess of the hour. This is <laughs> prophetess Naditra Young. God bless everyone. Listen, I deal with this foolishness all the time. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you only knew what she have to go through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, everybody, we're so excited to be with you in your homes today. And I know that you're probably going through a little tough time, but yes. I do believe that God has a word just for you. And I know that the word that God has given our pastor today, Pastor Shannon E. Young, is going to be a blessing to your life and to your world. It's going to shift the atmosphere yes. and turn things around. Hallelujah. And that is so true. And I'm so glad that I'm going to be able to give this word. You My know, God. this is a word that um, I actually get a chance to preach and speak when I really want to encourage people mm. when they feel like that they're really trapped between their doom and their destiny Ooh, when it seems like that they're right there God. in the middle of their hot mm -hmm. okay I don't even want to preach all right, right now. don't don't do it yeah, don't yeah, do I it can't, I can't I but can't. I'm telling you we, what, what's the title again trapped between my doom and my destiny listen if you're trapped and between your doom and your destiny, yes. you better listen to this message because it's going to bless yes. your entire your entire life. So listen, um, we do have some things coming up My God. on next Saturday. We want yes. to invite every single one of you to our Zoom meeting because we have a special guest that's going mm -hmm. to be with us. Yes, it's going to be Bishop Rice from South Carolina. He's going to bring his entire family and his church as well. Absolutely, and I'm so glad that he's going to be with us. So listen, if you want to join us, make sure that you register on our website. It is actually uh, onetouchministries.net forward slash praise power. And we got some more announcements that's coming up as well. So listen to this, and I'll be right back. And again, welcome to our ministry. Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nightitra Young are currently available for booking. Go to our website, www.onetouchministries.net, as well as find us on YouTube. You can type in One Touch Ministries, look for this banner. Make sure you like, click, and subscribe to the channel. Lastly, on June the 5th, we're having Brothers United featuring Pastor Eldris Burroughs all the way from Bermuda for someone tonight and I want to let you know that God does his greatest work in the night season it's in the night season where you start to find out who God is. It's in the night times of your life where things seem to be hard and things seem to be challenging that you begin to find out who God is. I've got a word here for somebody that's been paying their tithes and you might not have seen God come through. You've been coming to church faithfully and you might not have seen God come through. God is doing something that you can't see, but soon and very soon, there's a morning watch that's coming for you. I decree and declare that your morning time is here. I decree and declare that you're getting ready to go through what you've never been to. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, your family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 
Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, in the streets, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Hey, welcome back to the One Touch Ministry broadcast. Again, my name is Pastor Shannon, and I really pray that you guys will be able to join us uh, for one of our upcoming events. We are so excited about what God is doing for us. And as you know, you can see, we got a little different background. We're actually in a hotel in Greenville, North Carolina, where we just had an amazing time with uh, Ambassador Malik Winstead and the entire family of Kingdom Embassy as well as with the Ambassadorial um, Alliance of Churches and Fellowship. And on today, um, we want to actually be able to give you a word that God allows me to give every now and then. It is so exciting. I'm so excited whenever God releases me to give that word because a lot of times we as people, we feel like that we're trapped, that there's things that's um, that, that's happening to us that we get trapped and it feel like that we're right stuck dab right dab in the middle between our doom and our destiny there are some things that's uh, that may be going on in your life right now that if God doesn't intervene then you're going it seems like you're going to be uh, trapped you're going to be either going towards your doom where it's like oh man you know I'm never going to pull out of this. God is never going to be able to rescue me. And, but then it's also your destiny. But I'm here to tell you that right now you're on the verge, you're on the brink of the greatest uh, outpouring of God's spirit and his power in your life. And so in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 6, and coming from the uh, New Living Translation of the Bible, it says here, now this is a story where, you know, Jesus, uh, they had just finished feeding uh, the 5,000. And this is where, um, you know, God took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and then he gave it to other people. And so that's another lesson, but um, that's one of, that I call that a cycle in life that we actually uh, endure or go through. First God, he takes us. And then he blesses us. He breaks us. And then in order for when we after we get broken, he actually give us to someone else. And then the cycle continues over and over again. So after Jesus had finished feeding the five thousand, the Bible says, starting at verse forty five, immediately Jesus made his disciples go into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethesda. While he dismissed the crowd, after leaving them, he went up to the mountain to pray. And so this is here just showing, just saying that um, immediately Jesus made his disciples. One thing I want you to point, that I want to point out here is that sometimes God makes you do some stuff that you really don't want to do. So a lot of times God makes us do some things. Sometimes God uh, makes us pray for certain people. Sometimes God will allow us to, uh, or will make us uh, work in different places um, that we really don't want to work. But God uh, said right here, that the Bible says right here, that Jesus made his disciples go into the boat because their destiny was to get to on the other side uh, of the sea. So while, you know, they were um, dispersing, I'm pretty sure that the disciples were like, well, Jesus, yo, we only got one boat. You know, hey, um, how are you going to meet us? You know, we got places to go, people to see, all this other kind of stuff. And so Jesus said, don't worry about me. I'm going to send the crowd away. You get into the boat and then I'm going to meet you on the other side. And so after leaving, leaving them, Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. And so don't, aren't you glad that you have a God 
that you serve that actually prays for you that he actually takes up the time he's right there on the right hand of the father praying for your situation praying for that you be able to make it out all right praying that you know the thing that the enemy tried to come against you and try to destroy you that God has said hey listen I am right here praying for you and just know and trust and believe and hope that knowing that everything is going to be all right so later that night the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was and he alone was on land and so this shows here that um, late in the night the the boat the disciples were uh, right there in the middle of the lake that was right there in the middle of the sea and Jesus was alone on land uh, he saw the disciples straining with the oars because the wind was against them. So Jesus saw them torn. He saw them rowing. And, they, and, and it was a terrible storm that was going on. And so what I found really interesting here is that it said he saw the disciples straining uh, at the oars. Now let me just go to the King James Version of the Bible really quick. The Bible says here um, that he saw them touring and roaring, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came unto them. And so this right here allows me to know that I serve a God that not only uh, is praying for me, but he's actually looking down. He sees me in my affliction. He sees me in my hurt. He sees me in my pain. He sees me what I'm going through in my relationships with my, uh, it may be, your, it may be your, your wife, maybe your husband, maybe your boyfriend, your girlfriend, maybe your parents, maybe your father, your mother. Someone that has been there that hurts you and God sees you right where you are. Oh, hallelujah. And so I, so take fact and know that the Bible says this, that when it seems like situations is coming up, seems like that you're going against the grain, that the wind is contrary to you, that when stuff is um, coming up against you, that Jesus sees you. You are to look to the hills from which come at your help because your help really do come from the Lord. He said I saw that he saw them torn and roaring, for the wind was contrary, contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came unto them, walking upon the sea. And this next part was just so interesting. Let me go back to the NIV version of the Bible, because I want to see how it reads. It says here, he, he saw the disciples straining with the oars, because the wind was contrary. Uh, shortly before dawn. He went out to them walking on the lake. So this right here shows me that, um, you know, it was early in the morning, says so just about dawn, that Jesus started walking out on the water. And um, the next part was the most surprising part that I've seen in the scripture because I was just like, well, God, this this is mind blowing to me because I, I really don't understand. And so He showed me something here. It says here in both the NIV version and the King James version. If you keep reading, it says He was about to pass by them. In the King James version, the Bible said says that. Um, for a the night, he was coming unto them, walking on the sea, and would have passed by them. And I just thought about that for a second. I said, whoa, wait a minute, Jesus, you would have walked past the disciples when they see them choring and roaring, and they knew that, you know, hey, there were some things that was coming up against them. And you know what, God? So, <clears throat> there was an illustration that Benny Hinn had gave. Uh, one time, or uh, and, and he shared in a vision, which really helped me out with the scripture here. Benny Hinn said that he had a vision that um, Jesus showed him three types of people, and those three types of people was uh, the beginning Christian who always need to have a touch, always need a feel, always need to feel God's presence all the time, and then you have the person who 
you know, probably been in church or may have come in Christ or whatever, but then, you know, they don't really need that tangible touch all the time. They have faith to believe and know that God is there. And so every now and then, God comes in, just pat them on the shoulder and give them a little touch. But then there's that third person. That's that third person who is crying out to God, that's seeking God, still has the faith, but really don't need the touch from God. It will help him along his Christian walk and Christian journey. But then that third person right there just continues to pursue the presence of God. And so then what God showed me here in the scripture here is that Jesus would have passed by them. See, I believe this was a whole nother test of faith right there because they really was in the midst of the sea. Uh, you just need to tell somebody they was in the midst of the sea. Remember, he was on land and he saw them torn and rolling. They was literally trapped. So there's a, there's a lot of times, let me say this, there's a lot of times that we're right in the middle of our problem. Remember, you're on the verge, you're on a break of the greatest breakthrough that you could ever have in your life. And you're right there stuck in the middle. And the only thing you have to do is keep going. The Bible says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. So you can't stop now. You can't give up now. Don't resign or don't walk out. Walk out weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you, my brother and sister, know that right now that you're in the middle of your situation. You're in the middle of your circumstance. Jesus is watching you. He's looking right at you. And he said, just apply your faith because you're about to be right where you need to be and so a lot of times so right now Jesus is walking on the water and Jesus said I'm really about to pass by you because you're about to make it to the place that God that he actually wants you to be at so right now he said now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and so because right now he wants you to be able to apply your faith don't be like that beginning christian person who he needs to be able to stop by and touch all the time that he need to stop by and be able to say hey listen shannon um let me just touch your feeling you know, let me just let you feel a little drip a little anointing right now he said be that person that I can literally walk past and I'll meet you on the other side and know that you're going to make it out all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said they would have passed by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out, uh, for they said unto, um, for they cried out, for they saw him and were troubled. See, a lot of times, you haven't figured out if God is really right there for you. You really think that it's a spirit when it's saying this is really the spirit of God walking in your life, walking in your situation. He's walking on the water for you. He's ready to meet you on the other side. He wants you to apply your faith so that you can get to the other side of the river. But you know, every now and then we have those doubts. We have those worries. We have those fears. And God is, and, and then you cry out to God You and you really don't even know if it's God or not. You're like, okay, what is this? Hey, who are you? What are you? And so they said they were troubled and Immediately he talked to them, said unto them, Be of good cheer. Oh, hallelujah. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Right now in this time, in this season, God is encouraging you to be of good cheer. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. He said, because... It may not look like me because I'm operating in something a little bit different. It, you may have never seen God move for you on, on this level before. He said, but be of good cheer, be of good courage, for as I do not be afraid. And he went, in, and he went up to, uh, unto them and to the ship. And, the, and when he got in the ship, the wind ceased. And they were amazed and, and at themselves beyond measure and wonder. So let me read Matthew 14, 23 through 25. It says, And when he sent the multitude away, he went into the mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he alone was on, on land. But the ship is now in the midst of the sea. Just say in the midst of the sea. We're talking about the trap between our doom and our destiny. The waves tossed. 
to and fro, and the wind was contrary. And the fourth watch, and Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Hey, listen, right now, God is right now walking in your situation. He's walking um, in, uh, for you in your circumstances. God right now is telling you that you may feel like that you're trapped, but you're not trapped anymore. He said, I need you right now to be able to apply your faith so that you know that you're going to make it to the other side. And when Jesus, when he stepped onto the boat, the Bible actually says that they were immediately on the other side. And so that right there just tells me that, um, that right there just tells me that, wow, you know, you feel like that you're right there, but you're right there on the edge. You're right there on the brink. You're right there that God is going to take care of every situation. He's going to take care of every circumstance. God is working every situation out for you. The Bible says this. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Right now, my brother and my sister, you need to be able to count on the Lord for every single thing that you do. You need to be able to count on the Lord for every single circumstance every single thing right now you need to right now to be able to apply faith and God is saying to you right now that you need to be able to write down your dreams write down your aspirations write down your goals he said to write your vision and to make it plain because he said that there are some things right now that you are right now going to accomplish right now you're going to do it and God said that he's going to be right there with you because he wants you to be able to accomplish your dreams he wants you to be able to accomplish your goals. Don't, don't let go of your dreams. Don't let go of your hope. For God knows that, uh, uh, that, that when it comes down to hope, you have to have faith and hope. You have to have faith. And hope activate your faith the Bible tells us in order for us to activate our faith that we need to be able to stir up of the gift that's on the inside of us a lot of us have the gifting of the Holy Spirit and right now God has said that you need, need to be able to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you speaking into the own unknown tongues that you have that's on the inside of you and I encourage you my brother and I encourage you my sister that right now that if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, that right now that you believe God for it. You believe that God is able to give you the nine giftings of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit don't only comes to correct, but he is a leader. He's a teacher. He's a guider. And he'll be able to lead you and guide you into all truth. So right now, you may not know what direction that you're going in or which direction that you should be in, but God said that I will direct you. I shall give you directions. I will order your steps as long as you trust, lead, uh, believe in him that he will lead you, he will guide you, and he will direct you into all truth. Don't you, don't you let this opportunity pass you by because you feel like that you're trapped. You seem like, well, God, it seems like every time that I take two steps forward that the enemy knocks me back three steps. But I'm here to encourage you that you may be trapped between your doom and your destiny, but your destiny is right there in front of you. There's some things that God has lined up for you, and I can't speak every single thing that God has lined up for you, but you know those things that God has lined up for you. And so you have to believe it. You have to trust it. You have to depend on it. You, The Bible says this the Bible says that he will give you the desires of your heart what is the thing that your heart desires what is the thing that 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 that's so stirred up on the inside of you let me tell you this so I had a mentor uh, back in the day she said you know God was sharing with her that she uh, liked pearls that she liked pearls she said I never even thought about pearls but so God, so if you begin to seek God, God will unlock the hidden things of your heart so that you can say, wow, God, I had no clue that I had a desire for those things. And let me tell you, after God spoke to her and God spoke to her and said that she uh, liked pearls, she, years later, like when I see her now on Facebook, she right now she wear her pearls and she wear, you know, those things around. She wears the bracelets and everything. She said, this is something that God unveiled to me that I like. What 
is the thing that God uh, should unveil to you that you like? He unlocks the hidden things of your heart. And so a lot of times we have um, things in our heart. We have matters of our heart. Hallelujah. We have matters of our heart, you know, when, uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that stops us, that blocks us. You know, when it comes down to some people grew up, um, you know, being abused and some people grew up being homeless or, you know, maybe you had an experience where you actually uh, was homeless at one time and that has affected you. Maybe you had an experience uh, where you was molested. Maybe you had an experience where you was raped. Maybe you had an experience where your father uh, walked out and left you. Your mother walked out and left you. Those are matters of the heart that you never got a chance to mend or or, 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 or never got a chance to uh, heal from. But God is saying right now that the desire of your heart, that thing that has been locked up on the inside of you, that God has said that he wants to break that thing right now in the name of Jesus. And so uh, the Bible says this, is that God wants to take out the stony heart that's on the inside of you and put in a heart of flesh, a heart that beats after him what's a heart that beats after him a heart that beats after him is somebody who wants to love on god somebody who wants to worship god somebody some somebody who who wants to live a daily life every single day to please god and so do you have that heart do you have passion do you have that desire where you want to be able to please god every single day now i'm not saying that you're going to get everything right every single day but i am saying to you right now that you ought to want to be able to please your father which is in heaven so one of the things that uh i actually get a chance to teach on sometime is how you view your earthly father is how you view your heavenly father so a lot of times you know because we don't have a good representation of what an earthly father is because you know a lot of people say that oh my father is just a sperm donor or something like that you know he wasn't there he never loved me or whatever so that's how sometimes you view God because that man walked out of your life or maybe that man has never been in your life and so because men is actually show as an authoritative figure in your life then now you have a misconstrued thought of how God really is. And so I encourage a lot of people that when you have a misrepresentation of a man of God or a woman of God or your mother, your father that's in your life, find you a mentor, find you a spiritual mom, spiritual dad, someone who's in your life that can actually show you a, what an earthly father, what an earthly mother uh, is actually like so that your the view of your heavenly father will be as such. So I'll give the example of my father. I truly believe that my father, he really loves me, you know, and, you know, although a lot of times he may not, but now he does. He says, hey, you know, Shannon, I love you, you know, I love your wife, everything else, but that wasn't always the case growing up, you know. I knew that he loved me, but he never actually expressed it or said it or what have you. But, you know, I knew, and I knew he loved me. I knew that, you know, he would do whatever he could to take care of me and my family, and I knew that, you know, if I was to ask him for something, that he would definitely uh, provide it for me. So that's how, at one time in my life, how I view God totally. I view God totally that, you know, hey, I knew that God loved me, although sometimes in my ears or something like that, I really didn't hear it or whatever. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.